What's up guys, Justin Morgan here. Now, this video is covering um, some elements of the Bulgarian training method. In a way, um, the Bulgarian training method was, uh, as mo you know, this is the same information that's been rehashed in a ton of videos, so I just want to give a very brief uh, discussion, but it was originated or developed by Ivan Avajayov, the Bulgarian weightlifting coach to be used for this uh, um weightlifting and the snatch and the clean and jerk. So the principles were that you worked up to a max daily, uh, usually seven days a week, um, you know, multiple times per day. And they were primarily used very small um, exercise selections, so snatch, clean and jerk, and the front squat. They also um, used several other exercises kind of as assistance movements, such as the power clean, uh, power snatch, and um, maybe pulls, I think, were, uh, has been discussed. You know, the, the method developed over many years, so there was, um, you know, some variation in how it was used at different times. Um, that's my entire thing of the history of the Bulgarian method for now. Um, I may bring up certain things over the course of this video, but um, recently several um, big bigger channels on YouTube have discussed this style of training. At one point, when uh, I've mentioned several times recently that my channel at one point was a little bit more popular than um, it is now, and um, I had maybe four or five years ago um, compiled all of the current information at that time on this style of training and posted it in a video and went over you know, each person and how they applied it to powerlifting, because uh, this method of training was not originally used for powerlifting. It's something that uh, some lifters, primarily in the United States, have used. Um, now, recently, I know that in a video um, I was listening to of Jason Blahas, he mentioned, uh, he cited several uh, lifters that have used this method of training uh, for long-term purposes, and I, I feel that in a way he kind of misrepresented those lifters, so I, I want to, um, you know, go over why I'm saying that I feel that he misrepresented them and, and go over what they have stated about this uh, particular style and method of training. And I also want to talk about some about my own experience because I did this style of training for about two and a half years. So, uh, the the ultimate template that I'm going to, that I'm that you guys are looking at on the screen right now is from Powerlifting to Win and Izzy Navarez from you know the site and the YouTube channel Powerlifting to Win uh, developed this template and this is what I used when I was doing this style of training. Um, it it varied because I competed in both powerlifting and in strongman. So I, you know, modified it to fit you know the sport that I was competing in at the time, but. Um, he has a full video where he goes much more into depth about the history of uh, the Bulgarian method, and I will post that in the description box below. If you want to copy this method to use in your own training, I, I will post a link to his website, Powerlifting to Win, and you can go there and um, you know get the template and, and use it as well. Um, now, Jason Blaha in his video mentioned Max Aida and Greg Knuckles as sources of information on people that did this style of training for many years, and he said that they got fantastic results with it. Um, that's kind of contrary to what Max Aida has said, and I'll go into Greg Knuckles uh, in a bit, but first, Max Aida, what he says happened when, when you listen to him in podcast. Um, when you when you go to the Juggernaut Training Meth uh, Systems uh, YouTube channel, he actually has a review of the Bulgarian method, and he says he got six weeks of very very good progress where his squat went up tremendously. But following that, there was several there was several years where he hardly added any weight at all to his squat. So. Um, you know, now, if it was such a great method that he believed in, that he thought was that great, you would think that as a weightlifting coach training athletes that wanted to go to the Olympics, that want to go to national competitions, that want to win national competitions, that he would use the Bulgarian method if it was so great, but he does not. He has discussed in great detail why he uses phasic structure to go from you know, one, um, you know, given rep range usually I think is how they do it where you'll, you know, start with maybe tens and um, as you, 
go through your training blocks, you uh, change the rep range so often. So maybe like 10s, 8s, 5s, and 3s or something like that, I think is kind of how the juggernaut method is usually done. And Max, <clears throat> from what I've seen, seems to use that same, uh, at least template, that same ideology with his lifters. Now, in my experience with this type of training, with doing high-frequency, high-intensity training, I had the exact same experience. My squat went from around 200 kilos or 440 pounds up to around 500 pounds or like 225 to 230 kilos um, in about six weeks time period, which was very, very good results. I was very happy with that. I um, mean, that initial um, boost that I got in my strength made me want to stick with this training for a very long time and try to find different ways to make it work so that I could continue to get very fast results. But that just unfortunately did not happen. I kind of stalled out there and um, never really made a lot of progress. Now, I did uh, use it initially for powerlifting, so I was doing the squat, bench press, and deadlift exactly. I followed the exact template that was laid out here. The only uh, variation that you see from the um, the template that I had you know, had on the screen before was that I took some um, progressions from Damian Pizzuti and from the, the actual Bulgarian team where I would drop down and do a couple back off sets and I would generally do it at 80% of whatever I had done in my max. So I do 80% for three sets of three in whatever lift I had done. And that was kind of that was really the only variation from the template that you're see that I've showed you uh, previously on what you know I did. So that was kind of Max Aida's experience. It was not you know he did this for years and years and continued to make progress uh, throughout that whole time. So I, I think that's important to note because that seems to be very consistent. Which brings me to the next um, uh, concept, and that was Greg Knuckles. Greg Knuckles actually. Uh, made an entire temp manual for how to integrate Bulgarian training and uh, he had some different approaches where he would use different rep ranges it wasn't always a one rep max he would sometimes work up to a 10 rep max um, he would use different variations and, and that's all discussed in his manual you can download that for free it's uh, I think it's available at his website so that's you know something that you can check out and read if this is really the type of training that you're interested in but I remember uh, Greg Knuckles discussing at the reactive training systems uh, website years ago um, he was just a member there and he would discuss but when they this particular topic came up which this topic comes up every other year or so where it becomes in vogue again and people start to use it the Bulgarian style training of high frequency, high intensity lifting. But when he discussed it, he discussed using it as part of a larger training block. So you might not, he, he might have used um, high frequency, high intensity training for multiple years, but that wasn't all he was doing. He would, you know, have, he would have that as a block as part of a larger, you know, training uh, block with phasic structure. So and and what I'm envisioning the way he kind of the way that I interpreted his um, review of it at that website at that time was that maybe you would have periods of time where you squatted uh, you know with sets of ten or something two or three times a week or you know different rep ranges uh, just basically a volume block and then maybe you would have a strength block and then maybe you would have a peaking block where this type of training would become very relevant and you would use the, this style of training to kind of work up to that. But, you know, in his book, The Bulgarian Training Method, which I have, I downloaded it and read it when he first came out with it, um, it, it discusses a lot of different ways that you can use this style of training. So it's not like it's one way or nothing. You know, it just kind of requires you to, you know, be intelligent and, and consider that. So um, that brings me to the last point, and that is that the coach of the Bulgarian training a uh, Bulgarian weightlifting team, Ivan Abajayev, he didn't exclusively do this in Bulgaria. Uh, Dave Spitz of Cal Strength actually flew Ivan Abajayev to California and put him and some of the lifters and some of the people that Ivan Abajayev had brought over from Bulgaria in a house, and they tried to recreate in the United States what Ivan Abajayev had done in Bulgaria. One key difference was that the... Um, 
drug testing and the way that they were tested in the United States was very different than in Bulgaria. So the the lifters that we were working with here, they were drug tested frequently and you you couldn't just use unlimited amounts of drugs. Bulgaria was not helping United States weightlifters pass drug tests or you know get around that. That that wasn't the case and um, aside from drugs and, and that kind of thing, the United States is a very different country than Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, you could have an AK-47 pointed at someone telling them they you have to win or you're going to kill their family. That's not the case. I'm kind of exaggerating, but you know you get the idea that the overall atmosphere of what was acceptable in the United States was not the same as in Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, if you didn't win, you didn't stay with the team, then the result might be that you're going back to a very poor, impoverished area where you couldn't find a work and there there was no food and, you know, you, you didn't have a good life. In the United States, if you quit weightlifting, chances are you actually go to a better life uh, that's easier and you probably make more money. So, uh there were some key differences, you know, between the two scenarios in that way. Um, so that style of training, though, did not work well with those lifters. They, um, they, I, I'm not saying that they did poorly, and definitely they ingrained very strong mental um, strategies and mental uh, capacity to just do work, but it did not make them stronger. They did not get better as lifters it just beat them down and they actually got weaker over the course of training so um, all of those lifters from Cal Strength once Ivan Abijayev went back to Bulgaria and they you know got under different coaches one key coach being Glenn Pinlay who was the coach when I started watching uh, Cal Strength videos um, you know notably I worked with John North and Donnie Shankle when they became you know, some of the, you know, better known American weightlifters at the time. So um, that is just some details and some things for some of you that are seeing some of these other YouTubers that are using this style of training. I, I kind of wanted to catch you up on, you know, why I personally have used this style of training and, and probably will again in the future for time periods, but this is not how I normally train and I don't really advocate this style of training as a um, permanent long-term thing for anyone. So that's it. You guys take it easy. Remember to click like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Share the video uh, if you enjoyed what you heard and what you saw, and I will talk to you guys later.